even the idea of continental drift, slow and gradual, wasn't proposed by, in the conventional scientific community until the early 1900s. And, and for over 50 years, those who proposed the idea of continental drift, and they were thinking in terms of slow and gradual over millions of years because that was their paradigm of thinking, they were opposed and they were ostracised. And, and this is a good illustration of what happened, can happen with a paradigm change. After the Second World War, governments released maps of the ocean floor that they had developed as part of their submarine warfare. And suddenly, the geologists discovered that there were these mountain chains in the middle of the ocean basins. And they started to explore it. And within 10 years, there was a total paradigm shift. Before, you were scorned if you believed in continental drift. Mm. Now, it's the reigning paradigm. It's called plate tectonics. The reason it's called plate tectonics is because it's not just the continents that fractured, it was also the ocean floor. And today we have a mosaic of plates that make up the outer skin of the earth, the crust. Some of those, like the Pacific Ocean floor, is one plate and it's pushing against the North American plate. Mm. And where it slides past one another, it's along the San Andreas Fault in California, which produces earthquakes. Where it's colliding, today with the South American continent. The ocean floor is being pushed down underneath and of course it starts to melt and so you get the volcanic eruptions in the Andes. You can actually trace the plate's boundaries with the earthquakes and the volcanoes. We talk about the Pacific Ring of Fire. And so the reason why this idea took off of plate tectonics was because it was a very powerful way of explaining the features that we have on the Earth's surface today, where you have volcanoes, where you have earthquakes, uh, those sorts of issues. And why you have that ridge at the bottom of the ocean. Correct.